Hi, I'm Monte, the Mischief Maker, and guess what we're going to do today? We're going to make some mischief. So what's cooler than Lego? Huh? What if we could make all metal Lego? All metal Lego bricks. So we're going to give it a try. We're going to try to turn these into metal. All right, so we have a few Lego pieces. We're gonna prepare for molding. Uh, we're gonna make a silicone mold. But what I wanna do is fill the back of these just to make the mold a little easier. Like, not completely. I need the last couple of millimeters to, um, so that they will latch together. But um, I want to fill most of it so that I don't have to worry about the the mold material getting trapped in there. I'll just make it a little bit easier. I'm using a random kind of clay here. You could use about it. This happens to be sculpy. I'm not going to harden it. Uh, I just want something to, to put down in there. And then I have to um, I have to clean it out to within a millimeter or two of the top again so that the, the other pieces can snap in there. So I'm just going to push it down in there to begin with. Kind of push it down in there pretty good. And then I'm going to use my little tool here just to go around the edges and clear some of this out. All right, now that that's done, let's prepare these things to mold. All right, so what I want to do is put a bit of a uh, top on these as a pour spout. Uh, you'll see when it gets through what I'm talking about, but I'm going to put a couple little strips of cardboard on here. All right, now it's time to make the form for this mold. I'm gonna lay these things out, something like this. Give ourselves a little room. Oh, something like that. Now we need to get the wall around the outside. this down in there. Ouch! My glue is hot. Who knew? Alright, and the final thing is that to keep this glue from, or the mold material from leaking out, I'm going to seal up all these edges. They should be fluid tight, but you know, this is easy to do, and it's going to make sure it doesn't leak. All right, here we go. Let's do some molding before I forget. I want to spray a little silicone mold release. Let's do this. Probably don't really need it, but it helps. Now we're going to mix up some silicone. Get out some scales, get out a cup. Uh, I'm going to put on some nitrile gloves just to make things a little less messy. I'm also going to use the Smooth Seal 940. It's a knife soft. Here's something else that I made with it. It's a um, Westworld puzzle game. I've got another video if you want to go see me pouring some of those. But Smooth Seal 940, uh, it's a 
10 to 1 ratio mixture with this platinum hardener. Uh, now there is a, a higher temperature that you might want to use this uh, Mold Max 60, but all these are uh, smooth on products. Um, it's a little harder rubber. You can, I don't know if you can tell or not. Um, I think it'll probably be easier to, to demold the softer rubber. All right, so let's get this platinum cure. Oh, one of the cool things about this this platinum cure material is that it's actually food safe. So when I do food molds, so I do occasionally, uh, I can use this stuff. All right, brand new can. Let's open this up. Beautiful. Go ahead and get a couple of paper towels just in case. Put them over here at the ready. Now, let's uh, buy these big tongue depressors. These are the huge size. Let's add a little bit of this. I've got the tear set on the scale, so I know about how much this is going to be. Well, let's see, I want to do this in um, grams just to make it a little easier to do the 10 to 1. All right, that's a bunch of that. Beautiful, about 386. So that means um, at 386, I should add about 38 uh, more grams worth of hardener. So that should be about 424. This catalyst. All right, let's go up. loosen it up. You've got a long working time with this stuff. You know, some of the things that you want to do, you might want a quicker working time for this. This is probably good. All right, I'm looking for about 424. There we go. That says 424. Dang on, I am good. Okay. So, now a couple of things. Uh, first of all, let's mix this stuff good. Now, uh, your mixing is going to depend in part, perhaps, uh, on the equipment that you have. So I have a vacuum degasser that we'll be using in a few minutes, so I'm not too worried about mixing in air bubbles. Uh, but if you, and you can pour this without, I've, I've certainly done molds without degassing it. Uh, you want to be a little more careful about the air if you do that. Working bubbles in and, and how you pour it. Um, I'll probably degas this material, pour it, and then degas the mold again, just because I can. All right, so uh, it's nice when the when your two parts A and B are different colors. It helps you figure out when you've got a nice mix. I am, of course, trying to scrape down the edges to make sure I don't end up with any that doesn't have the catalyst in it. Uh, and trying to scrape along the bottom as well. So, again, for some of the materials, like if you go back to the Westworld one and see me casting the resins, it's got about a minute worth of working time, and then it turns to hard plastic. So, you've got to mix and get on with your life. Uh, but this is, I don't know what the working time is off the top of my head, but it's a good while, 30 minutes or more. Um, it takes 24 hours to cure. So, we'll come back tomorrow for for the demold. But... You got plenty of time, so I might as well use some of it. Let's scrape a little bit of this off. Again, trying to make sure it all gets mixed up together. 
All right, that looks beautiful. Okay, so here's the vacuum degas machine. I'm gonna put this down in there. I see some bubbles already coming to the top of this. Uh, and let's turn it on. Turn on the vacuum pump. Uh, and try not to overflow this cup because it's probably not big enough to do the whole thing. Let's see, you can, if you could see down in there, you might be able to see it rising up a little bit. And we're just pulling a vacuum around it so the air inside the material expands uh, and making it a lot less dense. And it will rise to the top and come out as bubbles. Ooh, a little bit of a mess. Uh, let's uh, pull vacuum on it one more time. All right, pulled the, pulled the material out of the degasser. You want to be a little careful how you pour this stuff in. Sort of give it a, a particular place to, to roll in and roll over. Uh, you're trying not to trap air in it once again. Not doing a particularly good job. But fortunately, this mold is small enough to fit down inside the... Uh, the degasser again. So of course you can't pull too much vacuum. Um, you know with a lot of vacuum a lot of fluids will turn to gas. You know water will boil at room temperature if you pull enough vacuum on it. So um, you may not want to pull too much vacuum to boil the, the volatiles out of the mold material. I think that probably looks pretty good. All right, today is tomorrow. It's demold time. So let's pull the foam core off. This is nice and, and hard and rubbery. Although if So now I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to make a fairly irregular cut on purpose because I want this to fit back down together in a with with a kind of registration. So if I can give this a little depth and a little variation That'll make sure when it goes back together, it goes back together exactly where it was before. So that looks good, and around on that side, that looks good. And now I can peel this off and pop my piece out, which is exactly the way that's, well, exactly the way that's going to work when we get the metal. I see there's a little bit of clay in there. Uh, clean that out. It's probably not enough to matter on the back side. I don't really care, but I will clean that out anyway. And so now what we'll, we'll be able to do is take this mold, we're going to close it back up like this, and put some molten metal in there. All right, I got one more to do. Let's do this one the quick way. All right, let's heat up a little metal. This is a Lyman Big Dipper casting furnace. If I remember, I'll put the link from Amazon's where I bought it. Um, this alloy melts at about 450. Okay, let's grab a little metal, clean off the top. Pour that in there. Get rid of a bit of this extra metal on the top. There we go. Now we'll let that cool off and then we'll see what it looks like. Let's open this up and see what it looks like. What 
we have in here? Oh, it looks like we might have... A Lego piece! Okay, clean up the top a little bit. Miss just a little bit on that side. Not too bad. I like it. Cling off the dross. Add a little bit of metal to this side. Eh, add a little more. Too poor is it the best way, but if you're going to lose it anyway, might as well give it a shot. Okay, we're going to let that cool for just a minute. Maybe cling it off and then try the other side. All right, give that just a second. And let's add some metal to this side. Two pours aren't the best. But we'll give it a whirl. Clean off the top. Let's open them up and see what we've got here. What do we have over here? Oh, it looks like it might be. Could possibly be. A piece of Lego! Clicking up the top. A little sandpaper. Oh. Shiny. Not too bad. Let's see what we got on the other side. Damn, what do we have on this side? Woo! We got something that jumped out onto the floor. We have what looks like a shiny piece of Lego. Cling up the top a little bit. That looks pretty good. So, that's all we have time for for today. I'm Monte the Mischief Maker, and I want you to go out and make some mischief. Let's open these up and see what they look like. What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? That could be a Lego piece with a big hole out of the middle. Eh. Dump that back in the pot. 